Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Let us move on to the next one. So in this case, what we are going to see is the major product of the following reaction is we have a bicyclic system, a carbonyl uh, compound is there. This in presence of an uh, acid gives some product. So we have A, B, C and D. So what is the product that will be formed when this particular ketone is subjected to acidic conditions? So let us look at uh, what are all the different possibilities that may happen. We have a electrophile that is going to be added into this case and we have a electron rich oxygen. So the first and the foremost thing is the electrophile will add to the oxygen. So this is how the reaction actually starts. When the bond is formed between oxygen and hydrogen, actually the oxygen donates its electron for the formation of bond. So, this gets a positive charge. So, now we know oxygen is electronegative in nature. So, this does not want to keep the positive charge, but it is attached to the double bond. So, what it does is it pulls the double bonded electron towards itself, one of the double bonded electron towards itself. So, making this particular carbon electron deficient. In other words, it will force this carbon to become a carbocation, but we have a strained system. So, whenever we have a strained system, that strained system actually is ready to open up, so that the strain is relieved and similarly, when there is a electron requirement in the nearby place, one of the bond can be actually given, the bonded electron can be given to that particular place. So, this is how the ring enlargement reactions happen very easily whenever we have a strained small cyclic ring systems C3, C4 kind of cases. So, they are very prone to ring expansion. The reason for ring expansion is nothing but they will reduce the strain. So, that is the driving force for the ring expansion reaction. So, here we have a four membered ring. So, that one of the bond sigma bonded electrons are now uh, will be uh, transferred to the carbon which is going to become electron deficient because of the oxygen pulling the double bonded one of the pi bond electron towards itself. So, the ring opens up. So, we have a phi membered ring that is happening and of course, the oxygen is uh, having that hydrogen. Now, one of the hydrogen is lost and this leads to the double bond between the carbon but when uh, this carbon already has four bonds. So, when it is going to form a uh, uh, double bond, then it is going to break the tetravalency of this carbon. So, that is going to be quite unstable. So, in that case what will happen? One of the carbon carbon bond has to be broken, then only this uh, carbon oxygen can form a double bond. So, the pentavalent is not possible. So, it has to again go back to the tetravalent. So, one of the bond is now broken and we end up with the carbon oxygen having a double bond and uh, the ring size reduced to form from 6 membered to the 5 membered, it just gets reduced. Because if you look at the stability of 5 and 6 membered ring, they are more or less having similar stability. So, that is the reason in this particular case a 6 membered ring becoming a 5 membered ring is also possible because the carbon oxygen bond wants to be the double bond and it does not want to be a single bond. So, that is the reason we have the 2 5 membered ring that will be formed from a 6 and 4 membered ring. So, if you look at uh, the number of carbon atoms, it remains the same, there is no loss of uh, carbon atoms. So, whatever is present in the beginning that is what exactly going to be present at the end. So, if you look at the number, if you count that this 6 membered ring has 6 carbon atoms, this 4 membered ring has 1, 2, 3 because 1 carbon is common to both the rings. So, 6 plus 3 total 9 carbon atoms are there and if you look at here in one of the ring we have 5 carbon atom, 1 carbon is common for both the rings. Here we have 4 carbon atoms, so 5 plus 4 total 9 carbon atoms. So, starting material has 9 carbon atoms, final product has 9 carbon atoms, so there is no loss of carbon atom happening and the only thing what is happening is there is a change of ring structure because we have 6 membered which is quite stable, we have a 4 membered which is less stable, 
So, when we have a less stable system with a stable system, we have some stability issues. So, if both are converted to 5 membered ring, both are having comparable stability and they are much stable. So, an acid catalyzed reaction facilitates this particular ring change, ring size change reaction. So, that is how we end up with the final product and of course, there is no elimination that is possible or that is happening in this reaction. So, product A is rolled out and the product B also is rolled out because here again we have the double bond. But between C and D, the only thing is the position of the carbonyl group is quite different. So, the last one D is the correct answer in our case because that is what is actually formed. So, the 6 membered, 4 membered combination changed it to 2 5 membered ring combinations and uh, the reaction proceeds via the carbocation type intermediate. So, when we move on to the next uh, one. So, here uh, the product formed in the following reaction is we have a bicyclic system, we have a double bond that is given here and this is treated with the uh, here this is a parasite. So, parasites actually undergo epoxidation reaction. So, that is what is the main thing we have to uh, focus on here. So, this is not simply a carboxylic acid, but this is a peroxy acid. So, peroxy acid followed by treatment with acid leads to introduction of 2 hydroxy group because first one is the formation of epoxide. So, the epoxide is opened up by the acid catalyst and leading to the formation of the dihydroxy derivative. So, if you look at all the four compound, all the four compound have the dihydroxy unit that is present. The only thing uh, the difference is whether they are in the cis orientation or in the trans orientation. So, that is the only difference which is present here. So, the starting material has the trans orientation between the methyl group and one of the hydrogen atoms. So, that is uh, retained in the product, but we introduce two hydroxy groups. So, what are all the different ways the hydroxy group can be introduced? Uh, they are in the trans orientation. These two hydroxy groups are in the trans orientation in the first product. In the second product, they are in the cis orientation. They are from the same side, bottom side. And in product C also, they are in the cis or the same side at, uh, attached. In one case, the hydroxy units are below the plane. In another case, the hydroxy units are above the plane. And then in another product, we have the same uh, trans one as the first case. So, here both the hydroxy, one of the hydroxyl is pointing upwards, other hydroxyl is pointing uh, downwards. The only difference is uh, in the first one, the hydrogen is pointing downwards, the one of the hydroxy which is closer to that is uh, pointing upwards. In the other one, they both are in the cis orientation. So, that is the only difference. Now, we have to find it out how the reaction actually, how the epoxidation proceeds and how the nucleophilic attack happens and how the product is formed. So, we can explain that by the chair conformation. So, this is a trans decline type uh, compound. So, we have a double bond that is present. So, if the double bond is not there, it is nothing but the trans decline. We have a methyl uh, unit present there. So, this undergoes epoxidation and we end up with the epoxide that is formed and the epoxide is opened up with the solvent molecule. The water molecule is the nucleophile that attacks this one. So, when it attacks, it actually attacks from the top. So, the hydroxy is introduced at the top and this hydroxy actually comes down. So, this is the trans orientation that is actually what is happening between the methyl group and the uh, hydroxy group. They are in the uh, same side or the cis orientation that is happening, but this hydroxyl and the bottom hydroxyl, they are in the trans orientation. They are in the opposite side. These are in the same side or cis orientation. So, we can find out what is the product that is having. So, here these two are in the trans orientation. Here these two are in the trans orientation. So, this is ruled out, this is also ruled out. Here these two are in the cis orientation and here also this is uh, uh, two are in the cis orientation. But the only thing is uh, here also we have to see how these two are present. So, in this particular case, this again, this hydrogen and the hydroxyl are also present in the same cis orientation. So, both the hydroxyl, the methyl and the hydroxyl 
or the hydrogen and the hydroxyl both are present in the cis orientation. So, that is the only product that is D, but in C here we have the trans orientation. So, this is not the product. So, that is how we can actually explain how the uh, cyclic system is opened up, uh, the carbocation is also uh, temporarily formed and uh, these kind of reactions leads to ring opening and uh, the steric strain of the ring system where both the hydroxy are present in the anti orientation is the driving force for getting the expected final product. In the next one, the major product formed on nitration of uridine followed by reduction with the tin and HCl is. So, we are given four different products, we have to identify or we have to find out what is the product that will be formed when the uridine undergoes nitration followed by reduction. So, nitration followed by reduction is nothing but formation of the amino group derivative. So, we have amino unit attached in uh, here in the A product and B also has the amino unit, C has the amino unit and D has multiple amino units. So, D may not be the right product in this particular case because what we are doing is we are simply doing a nitration and a reduction. So, introduction of NO2 group and the reduction only. So, D may not be the product. So, we can just ignore that product. We have to now find it out between A, B and C which one is going to be the final product that is what we are going to see. So, the structure of uh, uridine is given here. This is uh, amide unit, two amide units are basically given here. Uh, this is one amide unit and uh, this is also another uh, amide unit. So, this undergoes nitration reaction. So, we are going to find it out what is the nucleophilic site that is present in this compound because the nucleophilic site is the site of nitration because nitration that NO2 group is a electrophile. If an electrophile has to attack the molecule, the molecule has to have some place where electron richness should be there. So, let us draw what are all the possible ways by which we can actually create couple of nucleophilic sites in this molecule. So, the first one is as we know oxygen is electronegative. So, this actually pulls the double bonded electron towards itself. So, there is a shift of bond that happens and this leads to a carbocation formation here on this particular carbon. Oxygen is having a negative charge. So, in other words the nucleophilic site in this particular case is basically oxygen. So, the oxygen is the nucleophilic site. So, this we have to keep in mind. And what is the other possibility that is possible? We have a lone pair of electron that is present on this nitrogen. So, this can actually be given to the adjacent carbon and we end up with a carbon ion on a ring system. So, we have two places where the negative charge is present. In the first case, it is present on the most electronegative oxygen. In the second case, it is present on the carbon atom. So, the NO2 is the one, the NO2 plus ion is the nitronium ion is the intermediate that is going to be involved in this particular uh, reaction. So, how the NO2 plus ion is going to attack, which place it is going to attack is going to decide what product that will be formed. So, attack of nitronium ion on oxygen is ruled out because that is not possible and the only place where it can attack is only on the carbon atom. So, this is the only place where the nitronium ion can actually attack. So, in other words between D is completely ruled out between A, B and C whichever place where the amino group is present adjacent to this particular carbonyl unit is the place where the nitro group is actually added in the first step. This nitro group on further reduction with uh, tin and HCl gives our amino derivative. So, the product for this particular transformation is nothing but C because we know oxygen because other places cannot have the negative charge. So, for the nitration to take place we need a electron rich place or the nucleophilic carbon should be present there only the electrophilic nitronium ion can attack. So, with that we can actually uh, identify how the reaction actually proceeds. 
So, let us look at the next reaction. So, in this particular reaction, the mechanism and the product formed in the following reaction respectively are. So, here we have the water molecule, here we have a bromine atom. So, when a bromine atom is or bromo compound is treated with water, what is the reaction that will generally happen? We are going to get the nucleophilic substitution reaction. So, that is the expected one that is what is going to happen. Now, if you look at all the cases, we have all the cases either it is a SN 1 reaction or an SN 2 reaction. So, there are only two possibilities that are uh, possible in this particular case and uh, the product orientation is the second one we have to look out. In the starting material, all the hydrogens are below the plane. So, if a SN 1 reaction happens, then what is the expected place where the hydroxy group will come? Because if you look at the SN 1 reaction, SN 1 reaction is a planar carbocation that will be formed. If it is a planar carbocation, the nucleophilic uh, hydroxy group when it attacks, it can attack from the top or from the bottom. So, there are both possibilities are there. So, that means we are going to get up with a racemic product or a 1 is to 1 mixture of both the product. Now, the hyd three hydrogens are present at the bottom and uh, carbocation is formed. So, from where the hydroxy group can attack, now you know what is going to be the solution because if three hydrogen atoms are present at the bottom, then that place is actually blocked for the attack of the nucleophile. So, the nucleophile has to come and attack only from the top, that is the only possibility that can uh, exist, that is one. So, this is the clue we can easily get by looking at the problem itself. And the second one, because this is a ring junction, so and it is basically a tertiary carbon. So, obviously, this can only form a SN 1 type mechanism, SN 2 is not possible in this particular case. So, in other words, the first case SN 2 is ruled out, the third SN 2 is also ruled out. So, we are left with only two other solution, we have both SN 1 reactions are possible. Now, only thing is where the hydroxyl is going to be, whether it is above the plane or below the plane. So, as I mentioned, this is a tertiary carbocation, since it is formed in the bridge head, that is the major difference we have to look in this particular case. Since it is, uh, it can never attain planarity, because it is not a typical carbocation, because typical carbocations are basically planar in nature. So, both the top and bottom attacks are easily possible, but this is a bridge head carbocation, which is very difficult to form. So, when it forms, attaining planarity is very, very difficult. So, in other words, it is going to be like a little bit uh, bend structure. In other words, it is going, the carbocation's carbon is going to be little bit above the plane and the rest of the things are going to be little bit down. So, that itself is one reason. The second one, the bottom portions are now blocked by the hydrogen atoms. So, when the three hydrogen atoms are blocking the bottom portion and the carbocation is little bit bulged up. So, obviously, we know the hydroxy group can only come and attack from the top position. So, in other words, whenever there is a which of the product that is having the hydroxy group from the top is the only solution for this one. So, the answer D is the solution for this particular problem.